Hi everyone, my name is Nick, and today I'm gonna take you guys plant shopping with me. I am looking for a house plant for my home, a floor plant, specifically a low light floor plant. I'll show you guys where it's gonna go in a moment, but I've been at it decorating my apartment for the last couple months. I keep calling it my new apartment, but I've been here for like five or six months now, so um, it's not really my new home anymore. But I'm almost done with the finishing touches on my apartment. I'm almost ready to film an apartment tour, but I figured um, if I'm looking for a plan, I might as well take you guys with me and show you what's going on and also see what's cool. So I'm going to hop on the train in a couple of minutes and go to New Jersey and meet my friend and then we're going to go, I honestly actually don't know where we're going. She's just taking me to a couple of plant stores out in New Jersey and we're going to see what we can find. But first, let me show you where this plant is going. So right in this area over here, I have this planter on the floor. I originally had my, oh, there's me, hello, uh, a Dracaena Janet Craig over here, but I actually recently got this larger Dracaena, I, I forget the name on the top of my head, uh, that I have in this corner. So it looks kind of redundant having two Dracaenas right here. And I also have this cast iron plant, it's actually right here, but it's in the mirror, um, that is also giving off that similar vibe. So I want something a little bit different. So like a snake plant or an Aglianema or something low light, we'll see what they have, but this is where we're working with. So just to give you guys kind of an idea of what I'm looking for. We're about to get to Bob's Garden Center and they usually have a really interesting selection of plants. I don't need anything interesting today, I just need a low light house plant. But let's see what they have. We made it. A lot of plants to pick from. I know we came here for a reason, but there's going to be so many beautiful plants to look at. This table of Peperomia right here. Beautiful watermelons. Rosso. Even more over here. Some Fertisalata. Polybotria. So many varieties. My favorite. Look how this leaf is reverting. These look so much nicer. Look how beautiful these are. Still probably need a little too much highlight for my home. A couple other interesting philodendrons. Raptophora diversiva. Starting to get the splits. Little philodendron goldie eyes. The Matophyllum sprucianum, they call them. There's so many of them. Like a literal sea of them. As well as Raphidophora. They have a rare plant table. All exotic plants must be escorted up to the register by an employee. I guess they've had some issues here in the past. Some interesting ones up there. A lot of fans blowing in here. I don't know if you guys can hear me that well. Deschidias, Deschidias, a couple different varieties. All of these, I'm sure a lot of people will be excited about these. Some really nice ones. There's a nice little Billetier right there. Monsteras. A lot of plants that people are probably really excited about. I'm sure the prices are very high. So you can see a couple of them. Monstera Alba back there for $800. But a lot of this stuff looks really good. Little Painted Lady. Some Hoyas. Wow, they have a lot back here. Filled engine toward them up there. I don't even want to know how much that is. $350. So many, so many Hoyas. I'm definitely not going to be spending any money on any of these, but I'm sure people are. Alocasia. I'm really getting off topic here. You guys know we came here for a reason, but now I'm getting distracted by all this stuff that I'm sure is very exciting to a lot of people. And then we have Dracaenas, which are not exciting at all to anybody, except me. Dracaenas are perfect for low light, but I already have a Dracaena in that spot in my home, so 
even though they have literally so many lovely varieties, especially these green Janet Craigs right here, just don't think I'm gonna get one of these. I'm sure they'll have some other low light plants though. Of course, these Dishidias are catching my eye. C, absolute C of Dishidia, $7.99. Really good price, honestly, for this little full pot of Dishidia. Oeantha. I definitely don't need it. Oh, look at this right here. Variegated goldfish, I think. Nematanthus goldfish variegated. That's really, really cool. Also some really full plants back here. I think this is a Peperomia right here. Let's pull one out. Wow, $4.99 for this giant, giant, giant pot of Peperomia. It says Peperomia sorted. I think it's like Peperomia glabella or Peperomia trinervula. Once again, not a low light plant, not what we're here for, but absolutely gorgeous lipstick plant. Or is that Peperomia orba? I thought that was a lipstick plant, but I think that that's, yeah, it's a Peperomia orba right here. It's gorgeous. Really, this is why I love Peperomia so much, and I'm sure it's probably like five bucks. It doesn't have a price, but I'm sure it's like five bucks. There's definitely a lot of good finds here, even though they have some of those expensive plants that are, you know, very expensive. They definitely have some really, really good finds here. They carry exotic angel plants here. So those are the ones that you would normally find at like your Home Depot and Lowe's and big box stores. It's kind of nice to see them at a smaller run garden center because I'm sure they have a little bit more choice over what they get, but it still looks kind of the same. I'm sure you would pay a little bit less too at a big box store, but the plants definitely look better here. Little ruby cascades. This is gorgeous. Little Khaleesi right here. It looks so full. They're just little pots, so don't be fooled, but they're still absolutely gorgeous. $5.99. Not a bad deal, but still kind of pricey for a little plant like that. What's that? Ruelia. Ruelia, one of my favorites. More begonias. These are sexy. With these leaves and these silvery spots, they're absolutely shining in the light here. They have a lot more begonias hanging up here. So many wonderful varieties. These ones with the pink on it. This Medora back here. I don't know how well you can see it, but these are so stunning and they're so huge. I think these are grown by our local terrarium grower, Gary, with the blue tags, if you recognize, but his plants are looking so full. These ugly and namas are looking really good. Or Chinese evergreens. These are obviously a little bit smaller, but these are great low light house plants. They have some even interesting varieties. Like, look at this little pink moon right here. Looks like it needs a little love, but it still looks great. But there's some bigger varieties up here. These might actually do. They're usually a little bit more pricey, maybe like $40, $50, $60 for, let's see, $45.99 for a silver bay this size, which is very, very, honestly, a good deal in my opinion, but these look fantastic. Could obviously do a snake plant as well. They do require a little bit more light, but these look really good. One up there, for example, is $29.99, and I think those yellow edges would look really, really good with the yellow edges of my Dracaena that I have in the area. You know, not the most exciting house plant, but I don't have another one of these in my home, so this might be a really good call. We, we might end up with one of these. This one right here is $34.99. This one up here is $29.99. They're probably from different sellers. You can kind of tell from the pots as well, but that's a really good backup decision for sure. Some more Aglianemas. These are stunning. They have so many different varieties never seen some of these before but some of them are just so big and gorgeous they would probably look really really good in the area that i'm looking for i kind of prefer the ones that have more like stripes in the leaves so this is definitely more of a vibe but they might be a little too big for the area that we're looking for one of those snake plants might be a little bit more uh, palatable <laughs> they have some philodendron squamiferums which i've never seen in a store before back here at the <laughs> rare plant section they're a hundred dollars and then this Syngonium, they call it Pink Spot, $119, but it looks just like a regular Pink Syngonium. 
They do have an elbow. You don't see those very often. Also $119. I think these are all coming from the Aeroid Greenhouse place that all the places are buying from. But it's nice to see them. There's more filled engines back here. It's the Martianum. There's that 150 White Princess, Pink Princess. A lot of cool ones. Just very, very, very pricey. The Cebu's look cool though, but $80 for that? I don't know. I'm struggling to fit my big one of my Goldie Eye in my apartment, so these little ones are tempting. But $40, still a good deal, but that's how much I paid for my big one. Monsteros look great though, and the Adamsonii. Eye. Getting hot in here, but we have some really gorgeous, large, these epiphyllums. Look how huge they are. They have some other baskets too, but these are just gigantic. I don't really want to know how much they cost. And you're not going to find out because there's not a price tag on them. Oh, look, we have some string of hearts. Looking really good. $34.99. Acceptable, but still a little pricey. Pilea Glocka. Oh, this is nice. Peperomia Dollar Performance right here. I actually killed mine recently, so maybe I could bring this home with me. $7.99. I shouldn't though because I literally don't have any room in my windows for a plant like this, but ooh, that's a really stunning Peperomia Dollar Performance, if I do say so myself. They have that Ficus Umbelata that I've been seeing a lot on social media. Really good deal. $19.99, I guess. It's a good deal. I don't know what's a good deal or not for those kinds of plants. Some Schaeffler too. I really love the lemon lime. But honestly, I think that we're just going to be going for... The, the snake plants that they have back here. I feel like that's gonna be our best bet when it comes to low light plants. At least low enough light. We've talked about this plenty of times, but I think these are what's gonna look best in my home. Sweaty, but we made it out of there. I got a snake plant, as you can see, like we talked about. It's kind of basic, but it's gonna get the job done. And it's gonna look great. Um, not necessarily a low light plant, but it's gonna tolerate the low light for a very long time, which is why I just bought it looking how I like it, because it's gonna look the same way for a very long time. They have a really nice selection at Bob's. Uh, a lot, a lot of different types of plants. And also the prices, as you probably saw, are all over the place, which just kind of goes to show how wholesale prices are all over the place because I don't think they're charging more for specific things for any reason other than the fact that the wholesale price is just higher. I did get a few small things. I'll show you real quick. I know I wasn't supposed to leave with anything other than the big plant, but I did get suckered into a couple. They had this Ruelia Macoyana right here, which I have one at home that I absolutely love, but it's getting a little bit leggy, so I figured one of these little ones for $4.99 is a great deal. They also have these two other plants. I'm not entirely sure what they are. I think this is some kind of cissus, like sugar vine or something, and it was $2.99, so I was like, why not? And also this thing right here, which I also have no idea what it is, but it has some really lovely purple on the back, just like the Ruelia does you can kind of see. So I don't know, I figured I'd give it a go. It was $3 and if I don't have space for it, I can just give it to one of my neighbors. So now, even though I already have my plant, but we're kind of out here near Atlantic City. So we're gonna go up to Barlow's, which is like an hour away, I think, from Bob's and only like about an hour back to the city. So it's kind of like a little nice triangle, get it all out of the way. But I've never been to Barlow's before. My friend's been to Barlow's, so we're gonna go see what's up. We made it to Barlow's. Let's see if we can leave without getting anything. That's the goal for this trip. Oh gosh, but there's 20% off the select house plants. We're greeted with this rare house plant cage. It's kind of hilarious. They got some Monsteras, let's see, allocated. it's kind of hard to see the camera through. They got some Hoyas and Philodendrons, all kind of the things that we saw back at uh, Bob's Garden Center. So it seems like you'll find both the rare things about these locations and the prices look to be around the same. I don't know if you can see, but that Hoya right there, you cannot see it all. It's $150 and that's exactly how much it was at Bob's. We also have some Aglianemas.
Unfortunately, at this point, the music became a little too loud for me to film without getting a copyright strike, so just gonna do a quick voiceover. So we have some Hoyas over here, a couple of really cool varieties, these large Curtisii baskets that were a palatable $49.98, still not a low price, but for a basket of Hoyas like that, honestly, very, very acceptable. They also had these really interesting uh, Hoya uh, Pachycletas, I think it is. Uh, they look a lot like a Clusia, in my opinion. I think it's really cool. But I thought it was interesting. These 4-inch pots are $40, and while they are very full and nice looking, they also had these 6-inch pots over here that, as you can see, were uh, $39.98, so they cost $0.02 cents less than the 4-inch pot. So it doesn't quite make, sen make sense to me there, so kind of a red flag as far as maybe they marked up the... Other ones because they looked so good, question mark? I don't know, you guys can guess for yourself, but that doesn't make sense for me as far as pricing goes. Then we have all these other more, uh, you know, common plants, the Birkins, the Fatsias, which look really nice. Moving over to the Calathea section, we have these Orbifolias, which we saw at Bob's, but they have an absolute uh, little ocean of them over here, as well as a couple larger ones. And then on this back end here, we have some other philodendrons, some of the more common ones, but still very gorgeous, like the Xanadus, Prince of Orange, Lemon Limes, Bromeliads, I wanted to take a look at as well because I was talking about them in a recent video and how gorgeous some of their foliage is, and you can see with these examples right here how absolutely stunning their foliage is. They also carry the Bergs planters that I absolutely love. They have them in the unglazed, as you can see here. And they also had a couple of glazed planters, which I like to see because not all places carry the glazed ones if they have the unglazed. Outside, they had some Cebu Blues in 4-inch pots for a much better price than they were at Bob's, $32.98. Still a little high, but, you know, this plant is still one that can be a little bit hard to find at times. A bunch of other trailing plants as well, and then they had these begonia maculatas, a ton of them. I don't know if they, they are growing them uh, themselves in their greenhouses or if they're getting them in, but they're absolutely gorgeous. And then some other alocasias. Uh, I'm not really a huge fan of alocasias, but this maharani, I think it is over here, uh, the foliage feels really, really nice and reptilian. And then back here, there were some larger ugly names, but this one hiding back here really caught my eye. It's got some really interesting foliage that I have personally never seen before. Look at all of these bees pollinating these plants. It's so good to see all of these pollinators out here. We do not see this in Philadelphia. They're so happy. Managed to get out of there without buying anything, so we did a good job. They had some really nice plants. The prices were all over the place. I'm sure you noticed, but there was some copyrighted music going on in there, so I'm going to have to voice over all of that footage I took, but there was some really, really cool stuff. A lot of the same stuff we saw at Bob's, but there was some other stuff as well, and the prices were pretty much the same too. But now we're done plant shopping, we're not gonna tempt ourselves with anything else, so it's time to go home and see how the snake plant looks. We made it home. I have my snake plant, which was obviously the reason why we went out to go plant shopping in the first place, and it's gonna be perfect there. It's gonna go so well with the yellow edges that my Dracaena has, so that's perfect. I will admit, we did stop at another plant place on the way home, and I hate that I'm even saying this, but it's like a top secret place for me and my friends, so I am going to keep it that way. I'm so sorry, but I will show you what I ended up getting. Most of it is for my friends, believe it or not, but I did get a couple things. I have this box full of plants here, so you can see there's the Cissus rhombifolia, this Pilea creeping charlie, there's a staghorn fern, aluminum Pilea, this is a a Hoya Australis right here. There's a Ficus repens and a lipstick plant, the Ischgenanthus longicollis. I think that's everything. Oh, there's also a Pilea peperomioides in here. Like I said, <laughs> not all of this is for me. I think I'm just going to keep uh, the Cissus and maybe the Ficus and also the Pileas for a little terrarium that I'm doing. But the rest of them are for my friends, which I'm realizing is only half of them at this point. Uh, but uh, yeah, just keeping my friends stocked with some nice plants. We also have my couple of plants that I managed to only leave with from Bob's. We have the Ruellia macroyana. This, which I think is a sugar vine or a type of cissus, and this, which I have absolutely no idea what it is. Uh, let me know in the comments if you know. I might have already done some research, but it's worth letting me know if not. It's got some really beautiful leaves and that purple underside really got me. Just such a gorgeous plant. 
literally no idea what it is, but it kind of gives me like a Gesneriad meets Sissus discolor, just like overall super cool plant. So I figured it was $2.99, like I said earlier, so why not give it a try? So yeah, I'm gonna say today was a successful plant shopping day. I obviously think it would be a little bit more successful if I only left with this snake plant as we had originally planned, but all of the plants that I purchased today except the snake plant costs less than $5, which is a very good deal. And also a very big reason as to why I like to leave the city when I go houseplant shopping, because the prices are a lot lower out there. It's probably just translating to how the stores in the city pay higher rent, so their markup is higher, uh, versus obviously the opposite in the suburbs. Some of the plants obviously costed a high price from that one seller that we saw at both Bob's and Barlow's, which were just like, very, very high in their uh, retail prices, up in the hundreds for most of them, if not the multiple hundreds. There's probably a couple thousands hiding in there that we missed. Um, but obviously as well, that uh, seller must have a much higher wholesale price than everywhere else they're buying from because these stores aren't just marking up these plants because they're trendy, which obviously only people who are into buying trendy plants would be purchasing these house plants, which is why they're more expensive in the first place. There's a whole thing about it. But this wholesaler just knows that and is cashing out on that, which is, I guess, okay. I'm not really a big fan of it, but they can really do whatever they want. It's business. And I think it goes without saying that if these plants are this high in price, people are buying them. Some people, I don't know who, uh, but yeah, I'm just trying to basically say, I know I was probably saying that these prices were high when we were at the stores. Uh, but I don't think that these stores are whatsoever trying to nickel and dime you. I think they're just trying to offer these rarer house plants uh, and their wholesale price is just too high to handle, so they have to mark them up. So just kind of saying that there. Um, but it is, like I said, really nice getting out in the suburbs to see what kind of house plants they have, specifically going in New Jersey since I'm in Pennsylvania and some like Barlow's was in North Jersey, so I'm sure that they're buying in from different people than a lot of the plant stores in Philly. As you can imagine, like all of the house plant stores here in Philadelphia buy from these same sellers. So there is a lot of repetition when you go between house plant stores here. So there's not really that much to see. Uh, so that was really nice getting out and seeing three different stores that had uh, a really, really vast selection in comparison. So. Yeah, so that's it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage. Subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.